Well, a bit of it comes from the Kansas City-based writer Jason Whitlock. Our current gun culture, Whitlock wrote, ensures that more and more domestic disputes will end in the ultimate tragedy. Handguns do not enhance our safety. They exacerbate our flaws, tempt us to escalate arguments, and bait us into embracing confrontation rather than avoiding it. If Javon Belcher didn't possess a gun, he and Cassandra Perkins would both be alive today. You know, Bob Costas does sound better talking about politics and guns when he has Mark Stein singing underneath him with Marshmallow World, but I still don't like what he had to say, and I doubt you do either. Mark Stein joins us from Montreal right now to talk about this. Mark, uh, of course, you need no introduction, but you are the author of uh, America Alone, After America, Broadway Babies, mm -hmm. uh, several great books and a great uh, Christmas CD. But I want to ask you about what's going on with the U.S. right now, where Bob Costas, who I, who I like as a sportscaster, goes off the rail saying, worried about gun culture after one NFL player kills his girlfriend and himself. But 500 people shot in Chicago and nobody says boo. Yeah, no, th this is the ridiculous thing. There's, there's 300 million people. The idea that somehow this guy... Uh, who puts nine bullets into his girlfriend uh, somehow should determine the rights of the other three mil 300 million to own guns is ridiculous uh, because the crisis in the United States, crisis in the Western world really, is uh, not about guns or anything. It's about personal responsibility. Uh, the idea that somehow uh, this guy uh, puts, puts nine bullets into his girlfriend, uh, he leaves his child uh, an orphan, he does all this in, in front of his mother, uh, and then he kills himself. Uh, the idea that that somehow is the fault of gun ownership. The guy he was quoting, by the way, Jason Whitlock, said basically the NRA, the National Rifle Association, he said the NRA is the new KKK, the Ku well, Klux he, Klan. Yeah, and, and he actually went on to, to add that the NRA is out arming our young black people. Yeah, that basically... I mean, that's a conspiracy theory, if ever I've heard Yeah, one. that guy is nuts. He's basically saying that, that racist white people are making guns available to black people so they kill themselves, uh, which is actually the only people doing that are the United States government under its absurd Fast and Furious program, uh, which, uh, which uh, basically peddled guns to Mexican gangs so they could gun down Mexicans with it. Uh, so it's not entirely beyond the realms of possibility. But the fact is, I, I live in a, a highly armed neighborhood, uh, and it's a more or less a totally crime-free neighborhood. Uh, the, the, the right to own firearms, I think, is basic to free societies. I, uh, I miss the crackle of gunfire when I'm in, when I'm in countries that don't have uh, private gun ownership. Uh, Switzerland is the second most armed country in the world, and they have an absolutely minimal rate of uh, gun crime. So, uh, so, okay, this, so this Costas thing is... My, uh, Bob my, Costas my... isn't alone, though. And, and I just want to interrupt for a second to bring you uh, a, a report something that CNN put up, you know, that, that network uh, is, uh, is puzzling at times. But they, mm. they turn to a, a former Democratic candidate and real-world star from MTV who said, I've seen the tragic pattern across our nation of men who, in the heat of rage, had killed their girlfriends, wives, or lovers as if they had no other vocabulary or emotion to deal with the disagreement or breakup. He blamed the killing on manliness and said there's too much machismo. Uh, we're talking about an age when NFL players will openly cry and everyone talks about their feelings. And he's saying we've got to have more of that or, or this will keep on happening. No. Nobody wants to talk about the issue of you know, mental illness. Because quite frankly, I think if you're going to kill somebody and turn the gun on yourself, you're probably mentally ill. Yeah, There's that, something wrong with you. Yeah, that guy, that guy was mentally ill. On the manliness issue, I think actually we suffer. You know, it's not machismo. It's not sort of strutting cocksure posers. But I, I think we do, I think the, the good manliness, the kind of manliness we saw, for example, in the movie theater in Colorado on the uh, first night of the Batman movie, uh, when, uh, when, when uh, veterans uh, from the United States military who happened to be there with their girlfriend died and were injured because they knew enough to push their, when that guy started shooting, they knew enough to push their girlfriends on the, on the floor and shelter them with their body. I think we need more of that manliness. I wish there'd be more manliness at the Ecole Polytechnique here in Montreal when one man, one man with one gun, 
walks into a classroom uh, and orders all the so-called men to leave so that he can then kill all the girls, and they all go and stand in the corridor, and after he's shot every last one of them, he then walks out of the room and walks down the corridor past those so-called men without any of them lifting a finger to stop him. Uh, I think we could have done with more manliness in that room, uh, and I think uh, uh, the, the idea that somehow our society the, uh, is suffering from a surfeit of testosterone is, uh, is looking at the problem upside down. All right, Mark, this is why we turn to you in times of trouble. Thanks for joining us today. And, uh, and of course, uh, anyone that wants to find out more about Stein, you can go to Stein online. You can buy these uh, his Christmas CDs. It's past Christmas, but never too late to start shopping for next year. And, of course, you can get them to sign your books if you buy them through their Stein store. Mark, talk to you again soon, my friend. Always a pleasure, Brian.